I'm Caroline Udak, I'm the CMO at Impala. Impala is a Series B startup. We're a travel API company, so we have a marketplace where we connect hotels all around the world with room sellers who want to create different and unique travel experiences. When I was younger, I was very interested in television production. Still, I'm interested in TV, um, and I did some work experience, and I actually ended up on a test episode of QI with Stephen Fry asking me lots of very difficult questions I couldn't answer. So that pretty much ended my TV career before it began. But yeah, that's something I haven't told many people. <laughs>
initially came online sort of very quickly, but then for the past 20 years basically hasn't innovated at all um, because they have a playbook, they know where they're getting their bookings, they know where their guests are coming from. And what you see with COVID is that has completely changed. Guest um, habits are all over the place, you know, sort of how far out people book, how long they go for, cancellation policies, where they're going has completely shifted. And so what you're actually seeing is um, that industry is having to um, modernize, they're having to adapt, they're having to actually sort of take on new technologies. And as a result, I think they're much more open to our proposition. So while it's definitely been a challenge and you know, for loads of industries, we have an existential crisis, I think it's actually provided a huge opportunity for us. Yeah, so I think the CMO role, as again, a lot of people tell you, is one of the roles that has changed the most dramatically, I'd say in the last five to 10 years. I think a lot of other roles, you know, they always evolve, but broadly, I think a CFO role or a CIO role is generally doing the same thing. CMO role has changed completely. So what I would say is the main thing you have to do is you have to adapt and you have to keep learning. So I think that's really key. I think another big thing with CMOs is you really do need these kind of multidisciplinary CMOs. And I think that's where sort of my grounding with the WPP fell really helped give me appreciation of that, that you can't really be a CMO if all you understand is growth marketing and you have no appreciation for brand building and like longer term um, marketing. Similarly, I think if you're just doing brand building and you don't understand how to actually acquire customers, that's a problem too. Um, so, you know, and then similarly, I think you need to understand product marketing and how that fits in. So I think really having an appreciation of all the different parts of marketing and how it comes together is super key. I think the other thing that you really need to understand as CMO is you need to, tech is where the growth is coming from. You need to understand technology companies. You need to understand how they're set up. How does engineering work? How does product work? How does marketing fit into that mix? And how can it show value as well? Um, and then finally, I think there's really something about um, metrics, which is really key. I think, um, you know, gone are the days where you can say like, look, it looks really pretty. <laughs> um, you know, you have to really show we're telling our story more effectively. And as a result, you know, sales are converting better or, you know, so people are staying on the website longer and, you know, therefore using our products more or they're sharing it more effectively or whatever that is. So I think metrics again, um, and, you know, often it's very easy to put metrics on kind of shorter term, you know, whether it's Facebook ads or LinkedIn or search, they're quite easy to put metrics on, but the longer term brand building stuff is harder. And I think it's important to kind of do it on both, um, even though it's not as obvious. So I think there's that. And then finally, I would say, um, international experience I think is really key. Um, I was very lucky early on because that's how I started out my career. I was in London, South Africa and then spent 12 years in the States. Um, but I think increasingly as um, you know startups and companies are growing they're looking to enter new markets really rapidly and so you need to understand how does the German market differ from the US market, which differs from you know, a market in the Middle East or something, and understand those market dynamics, those consumer dynamics as well. And having kind of that sort of range is really important. My general view is, I think it's really important in your career to keep learning um, and to keep trying new things. You know, I think it's very easy, you know, to just say, hey, I do this one thing and I do it really well, and therefore that's the only thing I'm gonna do for the next 30 years. But I think that's kind of boring and you're not really gonna learn much. So I'm a big proponent of um, trying new things and changing, and one of the sort of, you know, I guess if I look the sort of threads in my career is I've often done stuff when it's fairly early or it's something new. When I um, joined WPP, we're in the strategy group and that was a new thing. Um, I joined, you know, marketing at Facebook fairly early and then set up the team. So personally, I think go for it if you want to change. I think that's good. I think um, one piece of advice someone gave me, which I think is quite useful, is you, you want to limit the number of things you're changing. So I think you can, um, you know, you don't necessarily want to be changing sector, say going from B2B to B2C um, and going from corporate to a startup all at the same time because I think your head's probably going to explode, it's just a little bit too much. Um, so the way I thought, for instance, about um, moving from Airbnb to Impala was the link was travel, um, obviously, but the change was going from B2C to B2B and I was very interested in B2B um, partly because I think speaking to a lot of friends, a lot of my network, 
you know, B2B is huge um, in terms of the startup world. And I felt like it was really important that I understood that sector. I understood how the marketing was different. But I think also there are a lot of um, B2C tactics that are being employed in, um, in, in B2B these days. So I felt I could also bring a lot. But I felt that, you know, if I knew the sector, I was okay shifting from B2C to B2B. I think if I'd done that shift and was moving into an entirely new sector, like you know, finance or insurance or you know whatever it was, something I was less familiar with, I think I would have been more of a jump. Um, so I, I, I think really limiting that. I think the sort of big company to small company thing really just comes down to the individual, I think, and how much initiative they have. And, you know, I, I very much found when I started Impala, initially I was like, wow, everything's so easy because I can just do things. And, you know, I, which is great because I think, you know, when you do work at bigger companies, there are more stakeholders, um, there are more approvals that are needed. So I found that personally very liberating. Um, but I think some people, you know, but you also need to take on that responsibility and you need to say, I want to do this, I'm going to own it and I'm going to push it through and I'm going to be accountable whether it works or not. I think some people like bigger companies because accountability gets sort of spread across multiple layers. Um, so I think you need to have the energy, you need to have the initiative um, and you need to really get stuck in and you need to be okay, you know, doing something that, you know, probably feels like, you know, it's the kind of thing you would have done 10 years ago, but then at the same time, you're also, you know, really having a huge impact on company strategy and you're thinking about team culture and company culture. And so it's that kind of like high-low mix, um, which is really important.